Picture this, you just built a brand new website which helps Instagram dog moms find overpriced dog treats for their fur children. It's a perfect work of art. You launch your project, throw 50 bucks at some Facebook ads, and bam, millions of 20-somethings eager to spend 50 bucks on tofu dog treats are flowing into your website. But wait, there's a problem. No one's buying anything. No, 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 that can't be right. You scramble to open up Google Analytics and you notice something strange. Jacqueline tried to search for dog treats. Well, no shit, Jackie, it's spelled dog. You dig further. Melody just searched for bone and she got no results. But why? Then it hits you, lowercase letters. She didn't put an S at the end. It doesn't match perfectly with any of your products. So what are you supposed to do? Tell your customers to type exactly what you have in your database? Make sure they always use the correct capitalization? No, that's stupid. Don't do that. We need full text search. But Tom, what is full text search? Well, I'm gonna tell you, that's the whole point of this video. <laughs> Anyways, according to Wikipedia, full text search refers to techniques for search. Ah, oh, screw Wikipedia, this is stupid. In simple terms, full text search lets you query for results in a set of data that are close enough to what you're looking for. What close enough means can kind of be defined by you. So, for instance, you could search for something like Australian Shepherd and still receive results for Australian Shepherd. Or you could search for bacon and receive both bacon and this bacon, but not turkey bacon because turkey bacon is gross. Now there's a handful of ways that you can accomplish full text search. The first and kind of most common way is to set up your own search engine using something like Elasticsearch, in which case you'd handle inserting, updating, deleting, and retrieving search results on your own server. You could also outsource the hard parts of that to something like Algolio, which lets you fairly easily set up search indexes and read from them and your client. Uh, that said, you do still have to handle dynamically adding and removing records from your indexes in Algolia. But I've got another way which might sound kind of stupid at first, but I think it handles a lot of people's use cases. Also, it's done entirely in JavaScript and in the browser and, you know, doesn't cost you as much money as something like Algolia would. So we're going to be using something called Minisearch. Minisearch lets you set up a simple search index directly in the client. You'll grab all the data that you need, plop it into Minisearch, and bam, you've got real-time results as you type search with no external search index off in the cloud somewhere. Now, this would be a terrible idea if you were, say, building a social media app and trying to search for users, but it's a perfectly suitable option for small to medium-sized e-commerce websites, maybe a blog or some documentation, or even just for something like providing more reliable search to users through, say, their own personal user information on your website. So maybe, say, like, your own personal house listings in Airbnb, where you know there's never going to be, you know, 50,000 of them or something like that. Essentially, if the data you want to search is small enough to be reasonable ship to the client, this could be a great solution for you. To get started actually using Minisearch, I've got a project set up with a Minisearch package installed, as well as a little bit of mock data here as an example. The only thing you need in your data is some kind of unique ID field. By default, Minisearch will look for a field called ID, but you can specify it to use any field that you want. The first thing we need to do is actually create our index. I'll define a variable called search index and set it to a new Minisearch object. The first field we'll pass in is fields. Fields is an array containing the keys from your data, which you actually want to be searchable. The next field that you can optionally pass is store fields. Store fields is an array containing the keys you actually want to return from your search results. In my example, I want to store price, but I don't want it to be indexed. Next, we can optionally pass some search options. There's a handful of these, which I would suggest you take a look at. Most importantly, boost fuzzy, and prefix. Boost allows you to set certain fields as more important than others. So in this case, I care more about title matching than description matching. Prefix does essentially what it says. So something like motorcycle would be given if the user types in moto. The fuzzy value is a number indicating how flexible to be with misspellings in the search. A lower number will require a more accurate input from your users. Finally, ID fields can be passed in to specify a field other than ID for mini search to look at in your data. Now there's a few ways that we can actually add data. Uh, the add data method takes an array of data and adds all of it. Um, you can add a single document using dot add and dot add all async performs add all asynchronously, which is useful for larger data sets. And that's all we need to do to actually create the index. So to search, we can just call the dot search method on your index to see some results. I've searched for D O G G E and received two results. Each result matches for terms doggy D O G G I E, even though I wasn't specified in the search. The results also give some additional data regarding where the matches were found in your index and for what terms, which can be useful for things like highlighting relevant search terms in your search results. Dot search can also take some additional options. One that I find particularly useful is the filter option. 
Filter allows you to filter out results similar to any other array filter. This could be useful if you have some kind of filter check boxes on the side and you wanted to filter by tags. In this case, like this example, you could filter by treats with peanut butter in them. And that's pretty much it for searching. There are a handful of other operations which I wanna go over super quickly. First, dot document count will let you know how many documents are in your index. And dot remove takes an unedited document then removes it from your index. I say unedited document because it's pretty specific about this in the documentation. The data that you pass to dot remove should exactly match the data which was already indexed whenever you pass the data in the index. Finally, you can use the dot auto suggest function to get search suggestions as opposed to search results. This function works exactly like dot search. In this example, I've asked for suggestions for the term pup and received suggestions of pup, puppy, and pupper. To show this in use in an actual app, I've created this simple little search application shown here using React. A simple way to set this up would be to do essentially exactly what we just did previously, then drop our index in a state variable. I've defined three pieces of state here to store search results, input value, and the search index itself. Below that, I've got a use effect hook with an empty dependency array to ensure it only runs once on mount. Inside the use effect, I define the index, add the documents, then run a set state call to store the index. Next, we need to write a simple handle search function, which calls dot search on the index, updates the input value and stores the results in state. Add the handle search function to your input, map over the results, and you're good to go. You can also do something like this to show all of your data if no results are currently present. I'm doing this here. It may or may not make sense in your use case. Now, this setup is fine, but I think we can go one step further by pulling all of this code out and dropping it into a reusable custom React hook. I've created one here called in use search index. It takes three arguments, one for data, another for mini search options, and a third for the search options, so the options that run on search. I'll define state for results and the index, then write a use effect hook, which creates the index using the provided params, adds the data, and stores the index in state. I'll define a method called search, which simply takes in a value, then searches and updates results. Finally, I'll return an object with the results search function, and index. I've included the index itself to make it easier to add and remove documents. To use this hook, I've simply refactored our first pass by replacing the use effect, state, and handle search functions with our new hook. Now we've got a simple reusable search index to use anywhere in our app. And that's it guys, thanks for watching. Take these ideas and expand on them. Like and subscribe if this was useful and I will see you next time, peace.